This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2023 Salem Platinum Edition model 29B BUD. So this is not a floor plan video, it's a how-to video. I'm just going to show you some of the features, okay? Okay. So you have these quick drop uh, stabilizers on there. They're, they're relatively new. They just started shipping them with them recently. Basically, you can drop them right down to the ground uh, without cranking them. Once you get to that position, then you can snug them up with the crank. But you don't have to crank them all the way down and up like that. It's just very, uh, very simple. And it doesn't, like I said, they just drop into position, then you tighten them up. Okay? Power awning with an LED strip. This is your water heater here. So this works on both gas and electric. Right now this is empty. Empty and is bypassed, right? That's because the trailer is still winterized. So um, this is where you drain it from. It takes an inch and a 16 six-point socket. Okay. This switch right here, this little rocker switch, that controls the electric heating element behind this cover. Never run the heating element without water in the tank. Always remember, you don't run the tank without water in it. Or the heater without water in it. So, um, this is the gas burner here. Okay, there's a switch inside the trailer to operate that. I'll show you that when we get inside. Um, so keep that in mind. It's bypassed right now and it's empty. Um, this is the, the vent for the range hood. There's a baffle there you can open up just by flipping it open and shut. Um, when you want to vent to the outside when you're running the fan over the stove, uh, make sure it's, it's open and flapping freely. When you're traveling or in storage, you can just snap it shut. Of course, outside speakers. This is a TV signal out, plus power if you want to put a TV out here. Um, this is a... Uh, we're just, we're just washing here. This is, still got some suds here. This is just a, uh, a quick connect for a coiled sprayer that comes with it, okay? This is the uh, fill for the fresh water tank. Now, the most common way to get water to the trailer, of course, is through the city water hookup. But if you're camping someplace that doesn't have city water, you can pre-fill your tank right here, and then use the onboard pump to pump the water. So I'll show you where the pump switch is also when we get on the inside. Nine times out of ten, you're just going to use city water, but if you need to take the water with you, this is where you would fill it. Um, before I drop this, this door down, I just want to show you, this is the quick connect to the LP system. You have a griddle, an outside griddle, and it has to be connected to the system. That's where it connects, okay? Okay. So it pulls out like this right um, this is the quick connect hose right here so this female piece uh, connects to the back of the griddle right there and then the male piece connects under the trailer where I just showed you okay that's how you get to the system um, this is the coil sprayer I told you about that hooks to the quick connect uh, for the water okay all right let me just close it or leave it open they're gonna clean it out a little better um, okay so we have uh, your front storage pass-through storage here this is the uh, crank for the stabilizers three-quarter inch crank and this smaller crank right here this small silver one is for the power tongue jack if the power tongue jack happens to fail for whatever reason um, you can pull this plug right here, this rubber plug, put the crank on there, crank it manually to get yourself out of trouble. Okay, you have two LP tanks that are full. It's got an automatic changeover regulator. Your deep cycle marine battery is here. And this is the kill switch for the battery, so you can shut the battery off if you need to, okay? Now when we come around this side, this is your dump hose right here. Of course, that's a reducer. Now, let me see if I can get in here to show you. This is kind of always kind of tough here. Um, this is your your um, solar controller. So, um, basically, 
right now it says you got 12.1 volts in the system, right? Push it again because it's a cloudy day. You're only you're only gaining 0.9 amps. I don't know if you can even read it with the, with the camera, so you have to trust me on this one. It's the upper right. It's the button upper button in the right hand corner. Then you punch it again, and it tells you you got 0.5 amp hours. Now this one's just plugged in, so it'll that'll all increase, obviously. So right now you got 12.1 volts. Uh, once it's topped off, it'll be more like 13 ish, 13.6, something like that. Um, you're gaining 1.0 amps at this point. That'll change constantly, right? And then, of course, amp hours. Now, if if you look in here and this is flashing and it says FUL, it's not broke. It's telling you that the system is full. There's no there's no place to there's no room in the batteries to store any more energy, so it's not converting at that point. So it shuts down. Flash and says FUL. As soon as the battery level drops, it'll go back to this normal configuration. Okay. All right. That's the solar controller. Okay. Hmm. How'd you get unplugged here? Or did it? Did they ever plug it in? Okay. So now you plug in. This is your uh, 30 amp, 30 foot power cord. We also gave you that small adapter you saw up front in order to um, adapt it down to a 20 if you need to. Okay. Come back up here. These are your tanks, two gray tanks and a black tank. Um, <coughs> of course, your black tank is always the larger valve. S toilet water and waste. The two gray tanks are the galley tank and then the bathroom sink and shower gray tank. Okay. You come back here. <coughs> First you have your city water hookup. That's the most common way to get the water to the trailer, like we talked about. You can, if you don't have any city water, if you're boondocking, whatever, you can fill your fresh water tank and um, uh, uh, use the onboard pump to pump water, but normally you're gonna have city water, so you have it right there. This is the black tank flush, so after you dump your black tank, if you leave the valve open, like you'll see on the sticker here, you leave the valve open, then you hook the hose at the dump station on here, turn around, it'll spray out the inside of your black tank, clean off the sensors. And it's a really good thing to do if you got a working hose at the dump station. Definitely do that. Okay. I think we're locked here. Yeah. This is your bike door, or uh, some people call it a travel door, an escape, or escape door, bike door. There are different terms, but um, you can escape from the, there, and you can also use it for storage. Okay. Um, this housing up here tells us this is pre-wired for a Furion backup camera. If you want to add one. Uh, that says it's pre. It's got a hookup for a Lippert telescoping ladder. Uh, if you want to add that too, the reason you might want to add that is because the manufacturer states that you should inspect the roof every 60 days. So you want to go up there, have somebody look up there, make sure there's no cracking or separation at any of the sealant, make sure there's no damage to the roofing material or roofing attachments by, let's say, low branches, road debris, that sort of thing. Always uh, that inspecting your roof should be part of your regular maintenance. You're just staying ahead of any potential problems. You're protecting your investment. So, odds are you won't have to do anything for a long time, but that's why you inspect it, just to make sure, okay? All right. Let's go inside here. Still working in here a bit, but we can still do this. Okay. So, when we come in the door here, this is your patrol panel. First of all, this is a dimmer. You just rub your... Rub your your thumb over it, right? And then you have two light switches. This is the outside awning light. This is the accent light there. Your water pump is right here. So to pump water out of the fresh water tank, if you don't have city water, you would use this pump. You also use that pump to winterize the trailer. Um, the water heater, I showed you to light it on, or to turn on the electric heating element. There's a switch in the lower left-hand corner outside, right? If you tur turn it on gas, you do that right here. See, there's the fault light right there. Okay, this is your slide room. This is your awning uh, a switch here. Never leave the awning out unattended. Always roll it in if you're not going to be there. Okay, battery is being charged now because it's been it was unplugged. Um, fresh tanks empty. Black. Both gray tanks are empty. Okay, they graduate up in one third increments as they go. Okay, um, let's see what else we have here. These are your keys hanging on the faucet. 
already. So you, uh, you have a backing plate here to put a TV bracket if you choose to. Um, your sound system uh, is a... Uh, okay, so you have FM radio, no AM. They've been shipping them without AM radio. I don't know why, but they have been. Um, The, uh, you can use this USB to stream off, stream off a USB drive. Uh, you have an HDMI. This is an in. If you want to go into the system with, let's say, a, you know, a portable Blu-ray player or something like that, you can go in there. It has, it has um, Bluetooth, so you can uh, uh, stream wirelessly from your phone to your tablet. And then you have two speaker zones here, one and two. One is inside the trailer, two is outside the trailer. So it does a lot. This is the remote for it right here. Then below it is the fireplace. So the fireplace, let me get it going here, aha, uh -huh. I might have to get a new battery in here, that's strange, did we lose the power cord again, let me look over here, it's partially out, again, let's go out there and see what's happening. It should normally be unplugging <laughs> itself, but um, it's got power there. There we go. That was it. It wasn't plugged in all the way there. Okay. Easiest way to tell if you got power is you look at the, the microwave, see it's flashing there so you have power. AC power. So here we go again. So you turn this on, right? Okay. Now this is a space heater so it has a two-speed fan in it. So when you push the picture, the, the button with the thermostat on it, you can see it goes zero, low, and high. That's the fan speed. Right now it's really kicking out because it's not high, right? Um, you also can change the color of the crystals. You can change the fire. So you got blue fire with white crystals now. And then the last one is a timer. You can set a timer on it, okay? But it's an excellent space heater for those days where you don't need to run the furnace. You can use campground electricity. This right here is telling you that this is pre-wired for a for a, a basically a, 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 a Wi-Fi signal booster. So the idea is you're, you would have a route if you bought the kit you can go to kingconnect.com and look at the different kits if you're interested. It would consist of an antenna that goes on the roof for, for, for Wi-Fi. Uh, there is another port on the roof where it would hook to. Um, then a router would hook into here. And then, you know, basically you would, all your phones would automatically connect to the router just like at home. And you, then you would go, in, a, in the web address, you'd go to the page for, the, for, the, for this particular router and then you would log on to the public Wi-Fi with it. It's just a signal booster and uh, just gives you a better service. So that's an option. That's what they're telling you right there. Okay. All right. While we're here, this is the carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should always be green. If not, get it serviced. If it goes off, take everybody outside, shut the appliances off, leave the door open, um, go to the front and shut the gas off and figure out what's going on. Okay, it should always be green if it's not getting service. So, this couch jackknifes flat right here, right? Turns into a bed. This piece right here moves, you can move it to this side and spin it around so it's actually getting another dinette seat. Um, it, you can configure it in different ways just by pulling this loose from the, from the brackets that hold it in place. There are different sets of brackets, right? Then you can take the poles out and drop the table down onto these cleats here right and turn this into a bed too so there's two enough room for a couple people to sleep there plus you have your bunk room the bunks are up right now always always put them down in order so this one says first bunk down last bunk up so you'd put this one down like so right then last bunk down so you put this one down like so. 
get the mattress loose here so it comes down. There we go. So then you have your, your bunk set up. Um, this turns into a bed, obviously, and then folds back into a couch, so you have a, a good, decent place to sit if you, if you want if you want to sit in here and hook up your, you got TV hookups and that sort of thing. Okay, I'm looking around as I go here. Um, okay, so this was a door we talked about right here. Um, that's for storage or emergency escape. Okay, this device down here is your power converter. So this converts AC to DC power. So as long as you're plugged into shore power, it's going to have 110 AC right here. You got 110 AC circuit breakers like you'd have at home, and they're all labeled. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC over here, and you got 12 volt fuses, and they're all labeled, right? Also, this is a battery tender, so it'll sense how much energy you're, as long as you're plugged in, it's going to sense how much energy your battery has up front, and always keep it charged. It'll send enough. It's, it's semi smart in that sense. It'll always send the proper amount of electricity to keep you charged. Uh, of course, when you're pulling down the road, your tow vehicle is going to keep your battery charged. And in the meantime, your solar panel, depending on the conditions outside, will always be sending energy to your battery also. So, um, three ways to charge your battery, okay? All right. Okay, so we come back around. This is just a pantry here. 12 volt DC refrigerator right here. Nice size. Microwave works like any other microwave. This is your range hood vent here. Remember, if I told you if you're running the fan, open that baffle outside. Okay. Your range here is very simple. You're just going to, you have three knobs here for the three burners. You have, this one's the sparker. You turn it clockwise to spark. And this is for the oven. So let me just light the center burner here. It's that simple. Okay, the oven is a little different. There's a, a pilot light all the way at the bottom to the back. Maybe I can spark it so you can see it. Yeah, you can probably see that sparking back there. So what you do is you go to the oven knob, you go to the picture of the flame, you depress it, and you keep it depressed while you're lighting it. Start sparking it with the other hand until you see it light down here. Once it lights, you still hold it in for another 10 or 15 seconds to heat up the thermocouple. Then you go to operating temperature. When you shut it off, the uh, pilot light goes off, so you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Okay. In this packet, this is all your literature, and this is a touch-up kit they give you. Okay. Um, under here is behind this panel. All the screws are number two square-headed screws, just so you know. Um, so you need a square head, number two square-headed uh, bit for your drill. Um, but that's where you draw the antifreeze into the system, right there, for example. Um, I can't remember exactly where the water heater was, but let me try and picture it. I think it's back there. Let me look, just so I, I know. Yeah, so it's... it's the, the water heater is also accessible through here, or this one, I'm not sure which. but. There's bypass valves on the back of the water heater, of course, if you haven't owned a trailer before. And you have to, when you're winterizing, you always have to bypass the water heater. And, and it's bypassed right now. So what, what you'll do is when you, when you go to dewinterize, you'll flush all the water out of it, out of the system. Then you'll put the valves on the water heater into camping mode. Let the water heater fill up with fresh water, and you're all set. Never run the water heater without water in it. Okay, so let me look around and see if I forgot anything. I think we got it pretty good. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so the sink of the shower worked like any other sink and shower. This is a GFCI here. So remember, all the plugs in the trailer are wired through a GFCI. So um, if it, if you're using it up, the plug something outside that pops, you're going to reset it here. They're all wired through it. Uh, the toilet it has antifreeze in it right now, and um, it's got a flush pedal right there, so you can't use it dry. By dry, we're talking about the black tank. So when you pull into the camper and you hook up your power and your water, you'll come in here, you'll put a dose of chemical right in the bowl, then you'll stand on the flush pedal and let, let at least a gallon of water go into the tank along with the chemical, then it's ready to be used. You can't use it dry. If you do it, the smell will be terrible. 
plus it can get, it can get clogged up. Um, so you never run it without a dose of chemical and at least a gallon of water in it, okay? Alrighty. And then you have a exhaust there. Um, the master bedroom here. You have an emergency window here, right? You have TV hookups here. And there's a backer plate here if you want to put a bracket to put a TV so you can watch it when you're laying down. And then you have a nice size closet, which is rare for a, a trailer. It's a good thing. This this pulls up, and there's here. Let me just maybe I can show you. Yeah, this pulls up. You see it goes to the front storage. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. So I think that does it. So I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Please remember what I said about inspecting the roof every 90 days. That's very important. It should be part of your maintenance. If you see something, take care of it. Odds are you won't see anything, but that's why you're inspecting it. Uh, right now, this is a uh, trailer's winterized. There's, the water's been purged from the system and replaced with antifreeze. The water heater is bypassed and it's empty. Okay? Thank you very much.